guy's cop realized he fractured the skull of innocent guy. In tragic news, we have this video, so let's check it out. Welcome back to Audit Zone. Around 5.40 a.m. on March 4th, 2022, deputies of the Paulding County Sheriff's Office, Georgia, got calls that a man with a backpack was trying to break into vehicles. Deputy Michael McMaster was assigned to respond to the incident. Around hey, the same bro, like, he, he looks so happy that he has a job here in this picture, man. But then something like this happens. Let's continue watching. Time like, I'm man. literally speechless. Named Tyler Canaris was on his way to work and had his backpack as he walked by the roadside. When Deputy McMaster saw Canaris, he quickly concluded that he was the suspect. So he got down from his patrol vehicle and, without any explanation, began ordering Canaris to remove his backpack and put his hands behind his back. Canaris was confused since he had not committed any crime. If something like this happens to you when you're walking, would you be super scared? Because I would. Because Canaris tried to defend his innocence verbally, Deputy McMaster quickly lost his temper and violently slammed the young man to the ground, Dude, what the heck? severely wounding him. Hey, you said before you go on the ground as well, man? This guy, this guy, you know, he, he, he already, he's already saying how he's going to resort to violence. And, uh, you know. But body slams, like, on the pavement? No, man. But we just wrote, watched a video where, you know, there's grass and he, he subdued the guy without body slamming his head on the pavement. Uh, you know what I mean? Body slamming. Bro, this is not like a freaking USC battle. I'm not sure if that's even allowed in USC, bro. Like, this, he's on the concrete, man. Bro, at this point he's like, yo, what did I do? Oh, this other rude cop comes. Bro, that's someone like pleading th for their life, man. Well, wow, this is this is very uncomfortable to watch, man. Dog, what was this cop thinking, man? Deputy McMaster committed multiple constitutional violations in less than one minute of encountering Canaris. First, he did not immediately state the reason for the stop, even though the young man immediately asked for an explanation. The deputy just started handling him aggressively. Canaris has a First Amendment right to freedom of speech and was right to verbally defend his innocence against the false accusation leveled against him by the deputy. As it was later found, Hey bro, now, now, now because of what he did, he's getting ripped apart by this guy's video essay, man. Right, rightfully so, bro. This is, this is uncalled for, bro. He's screaming in pain right there and they're just cu cursing at him. Canaris was not the suspect. Deputy McMaster just got angry because Canaris exercised his constitutional right to free speech, just like any I other- I guess, you know, 
he got tired of that happening all the time to him and he he he, he snapped i guess you know other innocent person would do when accused of a crime they know nothing about the slamming to the ground was uncalled for as we have shown several times on this channel, most police departments in the US would consider Deputy McMaster's behavior as an excessive use of force. The deputy's violent behavior violated the 14th Amendment. The deputy searched Canaris' bag. He and his colleague, Deputy Odgin, then joked and laughed about Canaris' behavior as the young man groaned in severe pain. When the fire department arrived to provide medical care, they found blood on the ground where Canaris was slammed on. he said you're older than wow man this guy is so arrogant and disrespectful bro i can't believe it man this poor innocent dude bro skull fractures guys he's oh my goodness blood on the ground like he's slurring his words like he's going through like um what's the word what's the term for it like you know trauma i forgot the the actual term then uh, I got a picture of you. Oh, I'm just trying to get to the board. Do me a favor, just relax for a second. When the cops say put your hands behind your back, you do it. And then be explained. I don't know where you think we're on. I was trying to explain to you, but you want to keep pulling away. So now you're under arrest for obstruction. I'm going to tip you. Yeah. Nope, I told you multiple times. All you gotta do is listen. Bro. You want to be a child, try to pull away. Zero. That's your fault. Guys, the guy's older than him and calling him a child, bro. Like, I don't think he really pulled away that much. He's just like. Nope, you're under arrest. No. Yeah. Really? Car parts. I got my other headphones right here. Please come on. I'm just trying to get my life back down. This guy went in over his head, man. He's, he's so arrogant here, man. This is so sad. Guys, this guy needs to lawsuit him. And the department, like, this guy needs to lawsuit. This guy needs to lawsuit, bro. Please, I'm just it made the dude cry hysterically, man. All he had to do was not body slam the guy at all, man. Like... And they're just like rifling through his belongings. I dropped him on his head, man. The guy wasn't even being violent, bro. 
This is uncalled for, man. Seriously. Deputy McMaster further violated Canaris's constitutional right by searching the backpack and emptying all of its contents without consent. Nothing incriminating was found in the backpack. In fact, the hand gloves that the deputy seemed to be excited about was related to Canaris's job, since he works as a landscaper. In his police report, Deputy McMaster made several ridiculous statements that will make any reasonable person question his worthiness as a law enforcement agent. McMaster claimed he treated Canaris violently due to the lack of sunlight. He also stated that he had no colleague to assist him, and his experience taught him that people like Canaris usually have targeted items. The deputy also narrated the encounter as if Canaris disobeyed him for several minutes, even though the time between his first contact and the violent conduct was less than a minute. I know, right, guys? He's just like, yo, what are you doing with my phone? This, this guy's trying to, like, you know, take his phone and everything, like... Man, pulling up, you know, it's like a... It, it, it activates a fight-or-flight response, 100%. Guys, you know what I mean? 100%. The deputy also claimed he sustained injuries following the incident. Deputy Odgan accompanied Canaris to the hospital. Following that, Deputy McMaster finally took his time to confirm the identity of the main suspect. He watched the surveillance footage and found that the main suspect wore different shoes and was likely not Canaris. Despite that, the deputy tried to justify his conduct by claiming Canaris quickly changed his shoes before he saw him. Canaris was eventually charged with obstruction of an officer. It seemed when Deputy Odgin followed Canaris to the hospital, he humiliated the innocent man even on the sick bed. Pat Gadsden, who claimed Canaris is his grandson, wrote a review on the Google page of the Pauling County Sheriff's Office. He wrote, They put my grandson in the hospital thinking he was the wrongdoer, had him handcuffed to the bed in the ER, and then told him they found the real criminal. My grandson had surgery on a shattered collarbone, a fractured skull, and a splinted broken thumb. The uh, that's shaking my head. Police report read he was released on site. I think that is a crime as he was taken to hospital by the police and handcuffed. In February 2023, Canaris' legal team announced they would file a civil rights lawsuit against Pauling County. One of Canaris' attorneys, Sean Williams, said the young man retained his firm just one week after the incident in March 2022. However, movement on the case had been minimal due to the sheriff's office blocking multiple requests for details they made under the Freedom of Information Act. Another Canaris attorney, Taurus Butterfield, said the obstruction charge the department later took to court should be dismissed. He explained that- At the least, bro, at the least. Georgia law, citizens have the right to resist an unlawful arrest, which is what happened in this case. The like, literally, he's just trying to do good, do work, and this guy's, like, trying to handcuff him. You don't know how, like, you know what I mean? Like, come on. The legal team was also concerned that it took the sheriff's office eight months before they finally decided to file the alleged obstruction charge. The attorneys also don't understand why the department and county solicitor did not bring charges against McMaster after their investigation. Attorney Williams promised to send a letter to the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate if the Pauling Sheriff's Office and Solicitor's Office were involved in covering up the deputy's misconduct. Due to his injuries, Canaris spent nine days in the hospital. He has now revealed that he can no longer pull or lift things like he used to. When a concerned citizen got the video of the incident and shared it on now, YouTube- Now, now he's gonna like lose his- Now he can't even work that much, man. Like that hard, bro. He probably- he might have lost his, um, landscaping job, bro. YouTube on February 16th, 2023, it quickly went viral and drew public outcry. After seeing people's reactions, Sheriff Gary Gulledge released a statement the following day. The sheriff seemed to be in support of his deputy by stating that Mr. Canaris repeatedly refused to comply with the deputy's commands to remove his backpack and place his hands behind his back. And that was why Deputy McMaster used force to bring Mr. Canaris to the ground and placed him under arrest. If the sheriff That much force? No. ...reports a quick escalation of a non-violent encounter that occurred in less than one minute, I think that says a lot about this department's leadership and conduct. Following their internal investigation, Deputy McMaster was taken off patrol and placed on desk duty. However, in March 2023, it was reported that the Sheriff's Office had terminated the appointment of Deputy McMaster for policy violations. The department did not elaborate- Thank goodness, now, now he deserves like a million dollar lawsuit, or at least a couple million dollars, man. ...on the violations, but it said that it was not directly related to the body slamming incident. The Sheriff's Office also added that the Georgia Bureau- It most likely was, though. ...investigation is still investigating the incident. 
As of recording this video, there was no new information concerning the lawsuit and the GBI investigation. I will update you if I find any new details. Well, that's all concerning this video. Thanks for watching. But shaking my head, shaking my head, guys. Uh, it's not, not cool, not cool. You defend the officer's actions, your problem. The, the, the fact that he has not been charged is egregious, I know, right? Uh, disrespectful both of them were bro but the main one is this guy he deserves million dollars it will cause lifelong PSTD PTSD I know right guys we gotta find out how we can get this guy millions of dollars because this is just depressing I'm, I'm literally appalled bro like uh, if we Guys, if I find out more information, I'll mi oh, we'll uh, react to it, guys. So this was uploaded four weeks ago, so see you guys next one. Two weeks ago, rather. Terrible, bro. Now he's got one million views just on this video alone of him doing something bad like that. Shaking my head. Guys, please consider donating. Donate, donate link is in the description. I do all my re reactions live on Twitch, so if you want to come through, say hi. You're more welcome. Thank you guys for watching. I'm not getting paid this month because I didn't make enough off YouTube. So anything is appreciated, guys. We've been doing this eight hour, seven hours a day, eight hours a day, basically seven days a week. Later, guys.